In this video, we will have a look at the Azure Traffic Manager, which is a global load balancer. It's able to load balance traffic across multiple regions. So looking at the slide over here, we can see the Azure Traffic Manager here and it's distributing traffic to two regions. So one is somewhere in the US on the left hand side here and on the right hand side here I've got another region it's distributing traffic to and this is in the UK South here. And this is providing multi geographical location redundancy which means you have redundancy across two different locations, two different regions. However, it's a DNS based load balancer, which means it load balances traffic using DNS. DNS traffic, which goes to the traffic manager, as we can see here from the clients and the DNS traffic from these clients go to the recursive DNS service over here. And eventually the traffic manager, which decides which region to distribute the traffic to. So these clients get to find out where to go from the traffic manager DNS service. They do a DNS query and get a DNS response from the traffic manager via their local DNS service, which I'll go through in detail shortly as it's important to understand the client to traffic manager communication and where the traffic manager has its concerns. But DNS tells them where to route their traffic to. So although the traffic manager tells the clients where to go, it's via DNS. Now we can see on the left here, I've got the client having a direct connection to the load balancer in the US here. And this is because the actual traffic itself does not go through the traffic manager. The traffic manager doesn't act as a proxy or a gateway device. The traffic manager only tells the client where to go. So we can see the client in the US has been told to direct its traffic to the region in the US. And the same goes for the UK client over here as well. So the traffic from UK, client will go directly to the UK South region load balance over here and this is based on which rules you select by the way so you can set up rules so in this case it's using geographic rules which means the client is sent to the closest endpoint based on where the DNS query is coming from based on where they are located in the world but I'll go through the different rules and methods of routing shortly as well so you can understand the different ways we can distribute client traffic across the multiple regions now we can see on the left hand side, these are some of the concerns with a DNS based load balancer or should I say with traffic manager in particular because the traffic manager is a DNS based load balancer service. It doesn't fail over as quickly as another load balancer solution would such as another load balancer solution that Azure does, which is called the Azure front door service. And this is because of DNS related challenges such as caching and systems not honoring the DNS time to live values. We will have a look at the communication sequence in the next slide as well. And it cannot do web application firewalling as well. So it's got no support for web application firewall support. And there's no SL decryption and encryption and scanning of your services either. So if you do need instant failover for performance sensitive services and additional security, then you would need to consider the Azure front door instead. Now taking a deeper look at the communication between the client and the traffic manager, which is really important to understand as you would understand the limitations of traffic manager. So we have a new service here, which is HTTPS colon slash slash services dot example dot com for slash login dot ASPX. And it has a C name of services dot traffic manager dot net, which is hosted in two regions, which is the EU and Asia over here. And we are going to use traffic manager to dispute the traffic between EU and Asia for the obvious performance and availability benefits. So this has a C name of these two down here, but it uses one at a time. So services.trafficmanager.net uses one of these C names here. One is eu-example.servicesapp.com and the other is asia-example.serviceapp.com. And traffic manager is used to distribute the client traffic to the closest available endpoint. And so these are our DNS records here that need to be set up in the background for this example. Now there's eight communication steps. So I've labeled them one from one to eight and starting off with step one. So the step one is from the user browser to the recursive DNS server over here. And what happens here is the client wants to go to services.example.com. So it sends a DNS query to its configured recursive DNS service, also known as a local DNS service, which works with the other DNS servers to find the IP address needed. 
And in step two, the recursive DNS service finds the name servers for the example.com domain and then contacts those name servers and requests the DNS record for services.example.com from those name servers. And then example.com DNS servers return the C name record, which points to example.trafficmanager.net. So for this, you would have configured a C name record already to point to your Azure Traffic Manager. Now for step three, which is between the recursive DNS service here and your Azure Traffic Manager, what happens here is then the recursive DNS service finds the name servers for the trafficmanager.net domain, which are provided by the Azure Traffic Manager service. And then it sends a request for the example.trafficmanager.net DNS record to those DNS servers. For step four here, once the traffic manager name servers receives the request, they will choose an endpoint based on the routing method setup and the state and health of the endpoints. And then for step five, that endpoint is returned as another DNS name record. Let's say eu-example.serviceapp.com or it could even be the other one asia-example.serviceapp.com as we can see over here, these ones here. And after that, for step six here, the recursive DNS service finds the name servers for the serviceapp.com domain and it contacts those name servers for the DNS record eu-example.serviceapp.com. And then finally, the DNSA record containing the IP address of the actual service endpoint is returned. Then step seven here, the recursive DNS service returns the DNS response to the client. And then finally, for step eight over here, when the client receives the DNS response, it connects to the service endpoint directly. Now the client and the recursive DNS service both cache the DNS response. So that DNS queries can be answered more quickly by using the cache DNS information on the client or the recursive DNS service. However, this also means that if an endpoint failed, let's say the EU region went offline, leaving only the Asia endpoint up and running, the client will never know this. It will use the cached DNS information and will not know without the time to live expiring on the cache before it's able to go out to DNS again and go through all of these steps over here and query the name servers. So this is the biggest concern with failover response times with Traffic Manager as it relies on DNS for failover. Now with Traffic Manager, it supports six traffic routing methods which determine how to route traffic to the service endpoints, which is the result of the DNS response. But it's better to show this on the Azure web portal. So let's jump onto it. Let's search for Traffic Manager from the search bar. Let's go to Traffic Manager Profiles here. And we can hit on Create Traffic Manager Profile from here. And then we can give it a name. Let's give it a name of TM1, Traffic Manager 1, dash services, dash example. Now here are the routing methods. And if we select this box down, we can see the different routing methods available to us, which are performance, weighted, priority, geographic, multi-value and subnet. So starting off with performance and you would use performance when you have the services in different geographical locations. It's when you want the clients to go to their closest location to keep latency at a minimal. Next is the weighted one and with weighted you can distribute traffic based on the weight of the services. But you could just use the same weight for all the service endpoints if you wanted to, which will then distribute the traffic evenly. A bit like the round robin feature. If you've ever used an F5 or another traditional load balancer and priority is used when you want to use a primary service and the others are only there as a backup. So backups are used only when the primary is not available. And with geographic, you can direct users to specific endpoints based on where their DNS queries originate from geographically. Then there's multi value. And multi-value is used for traffic manager profiles that can only have addresses as endpoints. And multi-value routing method can be used when an endpoint is dual homed with IP version 4 and IP version 6 addresses. And you want to use both options to choose from when to initiate a connection to the endpoints. Another benefit of multi-value is when the routing returns multiple healthy endpoints in a single query response. And if an endpoint is unhealthy, the client has more options to retry without making another DNS call. So you can specify a maximum of 10 endpoints with multi-value. 
And last but not least is the subnet option. And with subnet, you can specify which subnets go to which endpoints. So it checks the source IP and directs them to the endpoints based on the source IP address.